Thank you, Father Jaspers, Reverend Fathers, Father Becker, and the honored guests, and my brothers. So I'm the oldest of eight kids in a homeschooling family. I was born in Milwaukee, and I spent one precious year there, of which I have no memory. And after that, uh, my family moved out to Colgate, Wisconsin, which is a little town about 20 minutes away from the Basilica of Holy Hill. Um, the Basilica of Holy Hill has played a very profound impact in the discernment of my vocation, and especially the friars, in their example. The Discalced Carmelite Friars have staffed the Basilica for over a century. Um, I have fond memories of the four of us, my mom, myself, my grandpa, and my sister, my little sister, uh, going to Mass. The four of us would pile into Grandpa's bus, the white Oldsmobile, and uh, we would go to Mass, the daily Mass. And from an early age, uh, three, three, four, I started to feel this irresistible draw to the altar. My wonderful family has always been supportive of vocations. Now, this is something that they never forced on us, but they were always very open to. Uh, one of the practical things that they did, uh, was our, we had a costume bin, but uh, I had a priest costume. I had vestments. I had a mascot. I made myself a habit. Uh, and I would celebrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would uh, celebrate Mass. I, I have wonderful memories uh, playing Mass growing up. I passed on my mask kit and my vestments and my habit to my little brother who improved on them. Uh, and uh, one of the things, pardon me for being politically incorrect, but one of my favorite things to do growing up was dress up in my mass, uh, my, my habit, my priest robes. Uh, my sisters would dress up in their buckskin clothes and we'd go out and convert the Indians. Um. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> middle school, I started serving mass, which was Wonderful. Uh, it really gave me the opportunity to see the priest up close. One particular priest uh, played a very profound impact. Father Redemptus, Father Redemptus Short. I remember one day he told me, when you serve, you take the place of the angels. I remember another day when I was serving, he was standing, or he was a nine-year-old priest, he was sitting in his wheelchair, uh, and just hearing him whisper the words of institution, hearing him whisper those words. Such power. Such power. I was so inspired. I want to be that. And so I entered high school. Uh, high school was a very profitable time for me for two reasons. One, I started to see there's a difference between the uh, active life of the diocesan priests and the contemplative vocation. The contemplative vocation is the heart of the church. The active priests are the hands. If you chop off those hands, the heart bleeds out. If you don't have a heart, the hands are useless. I want to be that heart. The other thing was I started to struggle. I had social struggles, purity struggles, awkward teen struggles. <laughs> and these left me wounded. And for a long time I was ashamed of that. But brothers, the vocation to Carmel is a vocation to woundedness. It's to let Christ embrace us in our woundedness. I am united to Christ in my wounds. He raises me up within those wounds. As I ascend the summit of Carmel, and Carmel, the mountain of Carmel, it's in here first. It's not out there, it's in here. As I ascend that mountain, I go into that mountain. I let Christ, in his abyss of everythingness, embrace my abyss of nothingness. And as I am deified by that, as I am made God by participation, I raise the church, I raise you up with me. He raises me, I raise you. This is the vocation to Carmel. Yes, I have a heart that bleeds, it's wounded, it's wounded by human sins, wounded by human sinfulness, but no longer is it bleeding through human woundedness. It bleeds with the love of Christ. That is the vocation to Carmel. So I entered SJV, an awkward, shy, and scared homeschooler, and guess what? Not much has changed. In many ways, I still am an awkward, shy, and scared homeschooler. But that's okay. That's okay. Because I will rather boast most gladly of my weakness in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Just reading my, one of my great sisters, Holy Sister Elizabeth of the Trinity, she reminds me, I have a daddy in heaven who has a divine dream for me. So powerful. And I believe that dream is to Carmel. And so lastly, I'd like to conclude with a quote from Holy Sister Elizabeth here. She says, 
regarding the Blessed Mother and the time from the Annunciation to the Nativity, in what peace, in what recollection Mary lent herself to everything she did, how even the most trivial things were divinized by her, for it is uh, for all that the, for through it all the Virgin remained the adorer of the gift of God. This did not prevent her from spending herself outwardly when it was a matter of charity. Never did the ineffable vision that she contemplated within herself in any way diminish her outward charity. To contemplate that vision and to share that charity, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to be. Praise be Jesus Christ.